Okay, so um, what uh, Tamor did, uh, I want to focus on like the different camera angles that she uh, used in the play. Um, I thought uh, the different cuts that it makes um, throughout the play, um, you can see uh, the raw emotion on the characters' faces um, a lot easier than you would be able to if you're watching in a theater. Um, and a lot of times, the she was talking about it in the video, a lot of times the characters have their back turned uh, and you wouldn't be able to see uh, the emotion that they were displaying on their face. So I think something, um, because of the more uh, modern times, you can use those different camera angles um, to uh, key the audience in on different things um, a lot better than you could back when uh, when the play was being performed, either 20 years ago or before that as well. Um, the role that child actors play, uh, she was talking about this in her interview. Um, she said uh, she wasn't, the thing that she was uh, really concerned about was the fairy aspect of it um, and how she was going to, um, how she was going to portray that. Uh, and she uh, came across the answer of using children. These children are, um, they're used as kind of like um, raw, um, not emotion, raw, uh, perspective on things um, and you can use them to display nature you can use them to display magic you can use them to display uh, lots of things um, they're kind of like the the breathing the reason that the magic is it seems so real is because these these children are portraying the different natural um, the different uh, phases of nature within the play um, something I didn't understand was the intro or the kind of like the prologue at the beginning um, what it actually meant. I mean, uh, if you look at it closely, it seems like it's just Puck uh, and he's uh, having a dream. Um, and that's the end of the story, where that's not the end of the story. Um, the thing that I had to look into more was, what are they really getting at there? Uh, and the thing that I thought that they were getting at was, um, it wasn't so much of him having a dream, it was more of him inviting you to become part of the dream. So it's not uh, focused on Puck individually, it's more of um, convincing you um, that it's maybe it's um, maybe it's your dream, or maybe it's just some hypothetical dream. It doesn't have to be tied to one specific person. Um, I thought it said uh, a lot, or I thought it spoke most about identity. Um, the lots of confusion of who is who. Um, I thought that this is because of you kind of have an imbalance, or you have a stirrup um, because you don't know who is who. Um, and I think that this is because um, love is is kind of uh, off balance, and then this confusion of identity um, kind of proves the point that love is off balance because of um, they don't know who is who. Um, and then the second thing I thought about for this is just that people know themselves best. Um, there's a lot of people in the play talking about who... Um, who you should do this, you should do that, where the person themselves should get to decide everything that they do. Uh, the one specific scene um, that I thought um, I was really interested in was that with uh, Oberon and then with Puck um, and the interaction that they had when they were um, t when they were um, gathering the flower and the flower juice to use. Um, I thought that the the lighting and the movement around with those two characters around each other. Um, to really put all the focus and attention on the flower uh, and its power. I thought that that did a really good job at explaining um, the gravity of the situation and how powerful the flower juice is. And then the two questions that I wrote down, I just said, how does tragedy work in tandem with comedy uh, to create a more complex plot? And the second question said, I said, how would the play, how would the experience of it be different if you're watching it in person rather than um, on film? Thank you.